All right, we'll try this again. My apologies for the first video. Um, I don't know why it didn't record any of the writing on the screen, which is weird. Uh, so factoring, uh, as you guys look at the worksheet today, um, biggest things with factoring, I know some of you probably have done this before. Some of you, this might be completely new, which is, um, so this will kind of be a preview for what we do in chapter four. Uh, essentially what we're trying to do is try, we're trying to find factors that make these polynomial expressions. Keep in mind, factors are two things that can be multiplied together to get something else. So like the factors of six are one, six, two, and three. Okay. Uh, we're going to extend that thinking into algebraic expressions. All right. So the first thing we're going to want to do as we approach each of these problems is factor out the greatest common factor. So as I look at number one, okay, keep in mind these correspond to the numbers on your worksheet. Number one, uh, I have V squared 13V and 42. There is nothing common between those three terms that I can factor out, all right? And by factor, I, I kind of mean, if you wanna like more of a visual, it'd be like reverse distributive property. So is there something that I can pull out of each of those terms, and in this case, I can't, okay? So, after we've done that, we've looked for the greatest common factor of any, are there any special patterns? Well, I see that V squared is a perfect square, and I see 42. 42 is not a perfect square, so I'm not really seeing any uh, special patterns, and don't, you know, get hung up on this as far as things go. If you don't see a special pattern, it's really not a big deal, to be honest because you'll be able to, to figure things out in the long run. We'll also delve more into the special patterns as we go through things, all right? So then it says factor anything remaining. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna factor most of these by grouping. So the idea is you wanna take your A and C value, which in this case is one times 42, multiply those together. So we have one and 42. And then what we want to do is we want to think, you can either write this out or think mentally about the problem, but we want the factors of uh, 42. So 142, 221, 314, uh, 4, 5, 6, and 7, all right? And then as you look at this list or create this list in your mind, you're thinking what two uh, or what pair of factors is going to give me a sum of 13 and surprise surprise it's six and seven so what you're going to do is you're going to break up 13 into six x or not x my apologies it's v so 6v plus 7v plus 42. so the expression is the exact same if you notice it's just we broke 13 up into six and seven and then like i said before we're going to group so we're going to take this into two smaller groups and we're gonna figure out what's common. What can I take out of this first group now? Well, I can take out a V. What's common in my second group? Looks like the number seven. As I take that out, what's left in my first group? V plus six. What's left in my second group after I take out a seven from both terms? V plus six. At this point, you should notice that those two correspond, which is perfect because what you wanna do then is you wanna factor those out again. We have two terms. I noticed the V plus six is common, which if you factored by grouping correctly, that should be right, all right? And then that's your answer, okay? Keep in mind, you can always FOIL your answer and get back to the beginning, okay? So with what we're doing right now, if you ever think, you know, ah, I might have made a mistake, check your answer. If you can FOIL out your answer, you should get back to the original problem. So V times V is V squared. Our insides and our outsides are 7V and 6V, which is 13V. And the last are 6 times 7, which is 42. So I know for a fact I am correct. All right. We'll do the same process here. So, is there anything common between these first four terms? Well, it kind of looks like the number four can be taken out of all of them. And actually, rather a four X can be taken out of everything. So I'm gonna have X 
squared minus 2x minus 4 times 50 is 200, correct? So 4 times 48 is going to be 192. And then we want to go through that same process again. All right, so we're going to take our A and our C value and then figure things out. So we have 1 and 48, we have 2 and 24, we have 3 and 16, we have 4 and 12, and then we have 6 and 8. Okay, which factor pair gives us a sum of negative 2? 6 and 8. Oh, okay. So then we have our 4x squared. I'm going to expand this into negative 8x plus 6x minus 48. Then just like before, we're going to create those two smaller groups and factor out what's common. Okay. Well, in my first group, the only thing common is an x. In my second group, it looks like 6 is common. So I'm going to pull out 6, and then we have x minus 8. Notice, it seems like we factored correctly because they both have x minus 8, which means I can factor the x minus 8 out again. And then x plus 6 is my last remaining factor. Again, if you want to, you can foil it out. You will get back to the original problem. All right. Not all problems have three terms. All right. If you notice, number 12 is just two terms, but we do everything the exact same. Um, so we're trying to figure out, is there anything common? Is there anything I can factor out? Well, it looks like I can factor out a B. And then I'm going to have 7B minus 3. And then looking at this, there really isn't anything else to do. All right. So that's your answer. And some problems will finish like that. All right. Looking at the next one, is there anything common between 9, 48, and 64? Not really, but hopefully you notice 9n squared and 64 are both perfect squares. So this is one of those problems where we have this special pattern. All right. And when we notice this idea, we might be able to factor it as a perfect square, all right? So I'm thinking, what's the square root of 3n squared, or 9n squared, which is 3n? The square root of 64 is 8. And if you notice, that is your answer, OK? Kind of off to the side. Uh, I mean, this means, sorry, I'm just trying to look ahead. All right. Remember, this is what 3n squared plus 8 means, correct? So if you foil it out, eyebrows, eyebrows, nose, mouth, you do get 9n squared plus 24n plus 24n plus, that's a 64. Okay. So you do get back to the beginning again, and that works if those uh, are both perfect squares and the square roots of them times two, all right? If you multiply 3n plus eight, you get 24n. If you double that amount, you should get that middle term, which we did, okay? So kind of uh, look for those special patterns again. If you wanted to do this the old school way and do 9 times 64 and figure out the factors of that and figure out which ones give you 48 by all means, but sometimes those numbers obviously got a little dicey as far as things go. Last problem for your notes or kind of learning today, and then you have the rest of the worksheet to look at. Um, we have this final problem here. So we're thinking 12n squared minus 94n plus 180. So what can I take out of each term? And it looks like, I'm gonna do a little cheating here because I'm a, I'm a jerk. 
It looks like all I can take out of there is a two. All right. So we have six n squared minus 47n plus 90. All right. So now here the numbers get a little large as we're going to factor. So we have 6 and 90, which is 540. Factors of 540, 1 and 540, 2 and 270. Um, we'd say 5 and 108, All right? 5 and 108, which means we could have 15 and 36, right? Sorry, I'm thinking 5 times 3 times 6 times 6, because 6 times 6 is 36. 36 times 3 is 108. Yes. All right. Um. So we're kind of going through things with this being said as a, another factorization, we could do 18 and 30. All right. And we're looking for a sum of 47, 47, 47, 47. If you notice as we're going through these problems, the, the stronger your mental math is, the easier this is going to become. So we have a two, a two, a three, a three, a three again, and a five is the prime factorization of uh, 108. All right. So kind of looking through things, nine, 36, and then 25. Oh, wait, was it 25? Oh my gosh, I should have got more sleep last night. I am really screwing this problem up. We have three N squared, 90, 20, and 27. Oh, how about we just do that? Three an easy problem. The 27 and 10 and two. Yes, is that 47? Indeed. All right. So, how are we gonna break this up from here? What are we gonna do? We have our six n squared minus uh, twenty seven n minus twenty n plus ninety. My apologies on this last problem, by the way. So again, getting back to that process, we took six and 90, figured out factors that work. We broke up our sum 47 into two parts, negative 27n and minus 20n, you give me negative 47. Then we're gonna look at grouping, what's common in my first group. Well, what's common in my first group is a three n, and then I'm left with a two n minus nine. What's common in my second group? Looks like I have a 10 that's common. And then I have 2n minus 9. So then we wind up with, if you notice, congratulations. We have the same thing. 3n minus 10. And that is how you factor. Again, my apologies on the last one. Definitely should have got more sleep, and it's before 6.30. So maybe I need a little more caffeine this morning. Best of luck. Let me know if you have any questions. Finish out the quarter strong. Um, I'll get grades updated here, and then we'll go over expectations moving forward with quarter two next week. That is all.